I got a great uh, story from Rolling Stone on the Super Bowl one time, a uh, long time ago. Chances are, you know the story of Super Bowl 51. Or at least, the final version of it. In a comeback for the ages, Patriots beat Falcons in a heart-pounding Super Bowl. By Jim McBride, Globe Staff. Tom Brady is the greatest quarterback of all time, and anyone who says otherwise is wrong. By Doug Kide. Patriots were prepared for this uphill climb by Ben Vaughn of the Boston Globe. Patriots players were asked throughout the week if Brady is the greatest quarterback of all time and if Bill Belichick is the greatest head coach of all time. The answer is yes and yes. Absolutely yes. Coming back from a 28-3 deficit with 8 minutes and 31 seconds left in the third quarter seemed completely impossible to even the most logical human beings. Brady was astoundingly brilliant in the second half and put on a fourth quarter performance that was incredible even by his lofty standards. He completed 21 of 32 passes for 234 yards and a touchdown in just the final quarter plus. Which included a 91 yard game tying drive because he needed to add something this insane to his already ridiculous resume. The Falcons stalled after four plays and the game headed to overtime. The Patriots won the coin toss and there was no turning back. Once the Patriots won the OT coin toss, it was over. He was going to lead them on a game-winning overtime drive because there was no other possible conclusion to this game. Those were the words that were published, filling websites and sports pages alike, immediately following Super Bowl 51. But they weren't the only ones written. You know, we're in the press box, basically writing a running story, knowing that as soon as the, the final whistle blows, you have to send the story into the desk. So you have to start writing late third quarter, fourth quarter. When the Falcons went up 28 to three, I had most of what I wanted to write at that point. Yeah, I had about 800 words written at that point, and I was just waiting to top it off with a lead. I probably had a good 600 words written already about how the Patriots were outclassed and they couldn't handle the speed on either side of the ball. The story idea was going to be three reasons why the Patriots lost. Kind of an obit to a dream season. Going to be a hell of a story. Hell yeah. Once they started to put points on the board, it was all right, it's not a blowout anymore, so you can't write about that. Now you have to start writing about how they started to mount the comeback. And then the snowball just started happening. They started playing well. And then Hightower did have that strip sack, and that's when I thought, I better scrap it here and start writing some, uh, something different. Of course, some members of the press were more eager for a rewrite than others. I'm based here in Atlanta, and my first thought was, I can't believe this. I can't believe what I'm seeing. I mean, I've lived in Atlanta since 1985 covering sports, and I've seen choke after choke after choke. Tom takes the snap, hands it to White, up the middle, touchdown Patriots! As soon as he converted on that two-point conversion and it was tied up 28-28, that's when I was just went, <sighs> So what I immediately did was I pushed it all down at the bottom of the page. I remember I had two versions on my screen, uh, the double screen going at, at one point. Didn't hit select all, delete, kept that tab as it was, opened up the new one. The light bulb clicked, you know, don't delete it. It's, this is gonna be fun to go back and read it later. Uh, Super Bowl 51 by Jim McBride, Globe Staff, Dateline Houston. Three reasons why the Patriots unexpectedly lost Super Bowl 51 to the Falcons by Doug Kide. Instant analysis from the Patriots' loss to the Falcons by Ben Bolin of the Boston Globe. Super Bowl 51 first draft. Terrence Moore, national sports columnist. Houston, they pounded them. They outsmarted them. They abused them. They absolutely clowned them. The Falcons actually gave a preview of things to come on their first offensive play from scrimmage when Devonta Freeman gashed them for 37 yards. The Patriots defense was good at limiting those types of plays this season, but they hadn't played a high-powered offense like the Falcons. It turned out the Patriots defense wasn't good enough to win a Super Bowl. The Falcons offense was too fast for the Patriots defense, and the Falcons defense was too fast for the Patriots offense. After methodically marching from their own 25 to the Atlanta 23, it appeared New England could still make a game of this. That's when Robert Alford stepped in, literally. Tom Brady reached out in desperation, but he came up short. Ultimately, so did the Patriots. 
The Patriots, conversely, had just one takeaway on a key force fumble by Dante Hightower in the fourth quarter, but they desperately needed two or three in the second half while trailing by three and four scores. Got lock in now, laser focus! Brady, despite his status as perhaps the greatest quarterback in NFL history, proved he isn't a miracle worker. The Falcons took away the Patriots' horizontal offense. The Patriots aren't good enough to go vertical. And once Brady started locking in on Edelman, it was game over. I caught it! I caught it! The Patriots went one for three in the red zone and couldn't capitalize when they needed it. And when James White and Danny Amendola are your best offensive weapons, you're in trouble. Amendola reaches across the goal line for a yeah! score. Yeah! It's a tie game in Super Bowl 51. This was no fluke. Not with the Falcons holding a 28-3 lead deep inside the third quarter after making the Patriots look listless and clueless. And get this, the defense was making Brady look less than ordinary. Yeah, right. For the Falcons, this one made up for dropping the 1999 Super Bowl to the Denver Broncos and for anything else that caused folks to giggle whenever somebody mentioned sports and Atlanta in the same sentence. Even though the Patriots finally showed the pulse near the end of the third quarter, that's when I stopped writing. Toss sweep right for James White. Driving forward, diving to the yes! goal line! So A good. touchdown! So that was the doom and gloom analysis that uh, we never got to publish. <laughs> but it shows just how down and out the Patriots were at, at one point during the game and just shows how remarkable it is that they were able to come back. Football is one of the things that you gotta hear your work uh, read back to you. No, it's just a, uh, it's a crapshoot. 